Welcome to Issues and Answers. I am your host for today, General Norville. Joining me is CARICOM Secretariat, um, Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Manoma Suknandan, and the Director for Strategic Management, uh, Mr. Craig Beresford. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much, and a pleasant greeting to all the listeners and the viewers on behalf of the CARICOM Secretariat. Okay, wonderful. So let's start with you, Dr. Suknandan. If you could go ahead and tell us a little bit about CARICOM and your role within the entity. Okay. Well, CARICOM is the Caribbean community. It's you and me, it's all of us. And uh, it's based on the DeFi's Treaty of Chakwaramas. Of course, it has a long history. And um, my role in, well, I'm based at the CARICOM Secretariat in Georgetown, Guyana. And the word says it's already the Deputy Secretary General, the highest authority is the Secretary General. And then uh, besides deputizing, if I may say so, for the Secretary General, you have all the corporate functions that fall under the uh, Deputy Secretary General. And you also have uh, like uh, Global Fund, you know, PENCAP, uh, Resource Mobilization, and so on. All those things also fall under the Deputy Secretary General, including the Strategic Management Directorate, of which the director is Mr. Craig Beresford. Okay. And within that context, I'm, we are here right now uh, to deal with results-based management. And before we get into yes. that, uh, Mr. Beresford, go ahead and give us some insight into your role. Okay. Um, again, good day to your viewers, and thank you very much for having us. Um, my role is essentially ensuring that we are guided by a barometer, not only the CARICOM Secretariat, but also the community as a whole. And this instrument is our community strategic plan, and internally we have what we call a strategic business plan. So we are responsible essentially for articulating the vision view of not only the community but the Secretariat and um, distilling it in specific objectives and targets and goals that we want to achieve as a community and how the Secretariat contributes to these goals and objectives. We are also responsible for monitoring evaluation because you know if you have a plan, how do you determine success? and how you're progressing in terms of implementation. So we're also responsible for monitoring implementation and evaluating to determine whether or not our beneficiaries, the stakeholders, get the benefits that they, they um, I would want to say, they would have paid for because it's a regional public good and each and every citizen contribute to CARICOM and CARICOM Secretariat and also the risk assessment that yes. uh, the strategic management unit is responsible for. And whatever we do, whether it's project or within the secretariat, mm -hmm. we have to assess the risks that lie ahead so that on a timely basis you can deal with those. That also falls under the strategic management unit. Indeed. Okay. okay, now that we're well acquainted, let's get into the meat of the matter, your purpose for your visit here today. Tell us more about that. Well, we are here in St. Lucia and we are actually visiting all CARICOM member states. Uh, to sensitize people, make them aware, all the stakeholders in the respective member states about results-based management. Results-based management, uh, the word says it already, it's results-based, a tool that we want to use to achieve our results, to measure our results, to achieve our results in a timely manner, because uh, when we're talking about results-based management, it means you will be looking at achieving your results using a certain tool. In that tool, we have the time, the actors, we have the indicators against what you're measuring, what's your baseline, and all those kinds of things. Let me put it very simple. Uh, let's say the government, you have a community, a, a village, and uh, towards the end of 2019, uh, the result should be that in that village, uh, you want to provide 50 families with a house which means you are elevating their social economic status to a certain level. That's what you're doing. Now, results-based management, it gives you the tool. What are you going to do? First, 
you should be uh, you should know if the resources are available. Currently, what we're doing, we're just utilizing it without knowing how much do I have. So upfront, you need to know how much do I have. And that's a change in what, how we used to do our business before. Before, we would say, OK, we're going to build houses, right? And um, you bring nails, you bring the doors, you're responsible. So only activities. And sometimes you get lost in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are not able to really track down who is accountable for what, who is responsible for what. Uh, what's the timeline? If you don't meet timelines, who is responsible for not meeting timelines? Do, do we have risks lying ahead? How do we deal with it in a timely manner? So that at the end, we can provide the village with indeed having the 50 houses there. Currently, the way we're working is, OK, if uh, you have a year, one year, we go into one and a half year, right? Mm -hmm. And you know what happens? Often our resources, it's not coming from ourselves, it's coming from the donor community. And our donor community, the taxpayers, they also want to resource. And even for the governments, being politicians, your electorate wants to see results, right? So resource-based management is a tool so that when you don't meet the time, those responsible for bringing the doors or the paint or whatever, they don't know what they're supposed to do, you're gonna be held accountable for not achieving the result. And that's what resource-based management, management is about. It's for all the stakeholders. It's for the parliamentarians, because they can see what is being done. It's for us, uh, the daily man and woman on the road. Mm -hmm. They can know what is going on. Uh, the private sector, the public sector, um, name it. Whether it's the health sector, it's the agriculture sector, it's the fishery sector. Because I gave you an example for what, how you can use it at the national level. But if you now elevate this, you can do this at the regional level also, which means each member state will be able to see what is being done at the regional level, which regional institution is responsible to achieve a certain result. For example, in fisheries, or in agriculture, or um, on, I was coming upstairs, online registry, for example, right? Uh, do member states use online registry um, who is held accountable in a member state if it's not being used, right? Do we achieve the results? Those types of things. So uh, it's for everybody. Everybody is supposed to benefit from resource-based management. And with your permission, maybe Mr. Beresford can give you some more technical details about the RBM system. All right. Um, the RBM system, as BHG said, is in, you know, in a very simplified way, is how do you track the progress of implementation? Um, but first, before you can start to track the progress, you have to know where you want to go in the end. And um, in RBM language, that is what we call our ultimate outcome, the ultimate goal where we want to reach as a community. So what we have done with the community strategic plan is that we would have articulated clearly what are the short, medium, and long-term results that we want to achieve so that we can show the community on an incremental basis exactly how we are progressing. Because as you can appreciate, a lot of persons are impatient in terms of CARICOM and the progress it has made over the years. And we want to be able to show the community on an annual basis, um, every three years, exactly how we are progressing. But you have some very basic things that needs to be done before we can start to see results. Let me give you an example. At the regional level, we develop what we call a regional public good. So we may develop, for instance, harmonize customs legislation. But once we complete that, it has to go through what we call a decision-making process. Decision-making process would consist, firstly, of senior technocrats in member states, in various ministries. Then it goes to the ministerial level, to a body, say for instance, COTED, which is the Council of Trade Economic and Economic Development. But it doesn't end there. Once that is done, it has to go to member states to go through the respective parliaments. Once that is done, it goes on now to the customs department for them to operationalize that piece of legislation. So you can see it takes a long time first to agree on a harmonized piece of legislation 
take it through a decision-making process, take it through a respective parliament, and then operationalize that piece of legislation. So you can see where member states become extremely important. We cannot achieve any result on our own. And I say we because I'm pulling myself in the CARICOM construct. But CARICOM, as DSG said, is not just us alone who work with CARICOM, but each and every man on the street. We are all CARICOM. But it shows clearly the importance of all the implementing partners along the implementation pathway in terms of us getting to that desired result that we want. So we have a strategic plan with six pillars and two cross-cutting. Okay, before we get to the pillars, yes. just hold that thought, eh? Sure, no We're problem. due for a break. When we come back, more issues and answers. Tout moun say counseling, counseling, counseling. Ki te mando bagay chas? Depi mwen fet, pièce moun pa jamé counseling. Malik Lassia, just yesterday you asked me advice about your husband, and we spent over an hour on the cell. Sa se counseling? Just think about it, Iglas. When you're having difficulty with someone, you ask your friends for advice to help you to deal with your problems. But wouldn't you prefer getting advice from a professional counselor? Huh. I hope you're not one of those who think counseling is for crazy people. Mm. When your situation is bien way, ek mwen besoin professional counseling. Me mani l'argent. Iche a condition doctor's visit. Eh, eh. Don't you know the Ministry of the Public Service has an employee assistance program they call it EAP, which is offering six free counseling sessions for government employees? Iglesia, why don't you take advantage of it? Really? It's free? Lend me your phone, let me call the EAP unit ASAP, because I want professional, did you say free? Free counseling. Boy, Iglesia, wow, who is the counseling, sir? Call the EAP unit at 468-2269. EAP works. Let it work for you. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. Before the break, we were speaking with Mr. Beresford, who has given us some insight into the strategic plan. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, the strategic plan has six pillars, six specific areas of focus for the community, and we have two cross-cutting areas. Um, the first is building economic resilience. The second, building social resilience. Third, building environmental resilience. And fourth, building technological resilience. Then we have what we call two drivers. They're also pillars. One, which is community governance. How do we strengthen how we operate at the community level? How do we improve our decision-making process? How do we reorganize the regional institutions um, to ensure that they are very efficient so that you can get the best bang for the buck. Also, we have CARICOM unity, which is very important. When you leave St. Lucia and go to another Caribbean country, you should feel like you're at home still. It is how we relate with each other. How do you integrate into the community overall? So those are the six pillars, and we have two cross-cutting, which is how we coordinate our foreign policy and research, innovation, and technology. Now, under each pillar, we have a body of work that we undertake. And the heads of government in 2014 identify 11 priority areas. Three focusing on economic, which is ensure that we can create a single market, one. We can also create a single economic space. And then we can unleash what we call key economic drivers so that we can transition to growth. And these look at the sectors, agricultural sector, services sector, tourism. And it also focuses on something that is very important that the treaty speaks to, which is production integration. Then we also focus on areas such as human development, um, technology, I mentioned that, that's a pillar also. And we also look at crime and security, which is also very important because you know our member countries have serious issues with um, crime and security. So that's in, in a snapshot, but I urge your viewers to go onto our website, www.caricom.org, and you will be able to get a copy of the community strategic plan. 
but it's very important that everyone have an understanding of the direction that the community is going so that when we release our first report and this is about coming from the RBM system that we have developed that you'll be able to see the progress we have made over the last couple of years. Okay, so Dr. Suknandan, if you could tell us um, about the RBM system, basically how would this benefit the various member states? The member states can hold the CARICOM Secretariat themselves, the stakeholders in the respective member states, parliament, ministers, uh, permanent secretaries, attorneys general, because they play an important role when it comes to approving legislation at the regional level, accountable for not achieving results, or for not achieving results in a timely manner, or for having to give back monies to our funding partners because the monies become ineligible because we have not used them, one, or member states are not operationalizing, not implementing decisions and regional goods that have been developed and they are not using it in member states, it means the money spent is ineligible and we have to give it back, okay? So those are the things that you will be able to see and track it down from the RBM system. And as Mr. Beresford mentioned, the first quarter next year, we will have our first report based on the strategic plan 2015-2019. And you, it will be, the access is free. Everybody will be able to access it and you will be able to see the progress the, re, the community has made. Not the CARICOM Secretariat, but the community includes the Secretariat and the member states and the regional institutions. We haven't uh, talked about the regional institutions, but the uh, regional institutions like CARFA, the Fisheries Mechanism, uh, Competition Commission, Climate Change Center, all CARDI, all of them are part of the CARICOM construct, right? So they're also CARICOM institutions. So you will be then able to see uh, first quarter next year what progress we have made together. And where we have not made progress, who is to be held accountable? And then uh, people will see um, Talking about implementation deficit, we often talk about implementation deficit, and often people look at this CARICOM secretariat that it is not really the CARICOM secretariat, but a lot needs to be done in member states. And uh, often our member states uh, complain that they don't see the benefits of CARICOM. But I can tell you, due to CARICOM, because of CARICOM, our people are benefiting a lot. But unfortunately, um, and this is something that came out also in our sessions with other member states where we have already been. Um, there is a tremendous need for communication in our member states about CARICOM. What is being done and what are the benefits? And when you put all those benefits in a matrix, you will see that each CARICOM member state, each of the 15 have benefited tremendously because of CARICOM be it in agriculture, be it in fisheries, be it single market, we're not talking about economy, um, be it competition, uh, customs legislation, training people, having workshops, all kinds of things. Simple things like uh, small ruminants projects, black sheep or black belly sheep projects, all these kinds of things, right? In each member state we have been doing these things and uh, it's been a lot. And I really hope that through RBM, using RBM, out of the strategic plan, first quarter next year, the community will be able to see what and how they have benefited from the CARICOM construct. Okay, if you could just um, summarize some of the feedback that you have received and then share your final thoughts. Uh, the feedback that we have received in all the countries, I must say, from I think all the stakeholders, if I may say so, even from um, the state actors, is that there is not enough communication, information sharing, right? And uh, people want to have regular information, regular updates. So yes, the secretariat, we have Twitter, we are on Facebook, Facebook and, and um, Netflix, 
something else? <laughs> no, there, there is something else? I don't know. Anyway, but uh, it seems like it's not enough. And there is something else that is very important. You know, when we talk at a certain level, we use these terminologies and, and we use words that are really um, strange to the average man and woman on the street. So what we have to do is when we communicate with people, we really have to break it into sense and five cents so that everybody understands the language, right? And that everybody can work with it. Otherwise, it will be hanging out there and people really and truly will see CARICOM as a balloon up in the air and the people themselves are somewhere else. And we're looking at the balloon and the balloon has to do some wonders, but that's not what's gonna be happening. All of us, you, me, everyone, in our community, we are CARICOM, right? And if we fail, CARICOM will fail. But if we say that CARICOM is failing and CARICOM is not doing what it's supposed to do, it means we are failing, we, we, all of us, we are failing. We're not doing what we are supposed to do, right? So that's why we are heading towards this direction, a change, a tool that should bring a change and uh, we really hope that we will have all member states on board. That's why we have awareness sensitization, so that member states will also use the RBM at the national level to also uh, work towards res achieving results. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, I really appreciated the, the information given and. Um, I'm sure everybody will put that into good use and hopefully the various member states will make use of the, the system. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Thank you You've, very much. You're welcome. Um, you've been watching Issues and Answers with me, Janelle Norville. Thank you for staying tuned. Until next time.